Hello and welcome to this very interesting video for ElectroPages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell. Today we're here at PCIM 2025 in Nuremberg. And well, this is a rather interesting topic because at PCIM, everything is about power. SIG, the fight between GAN and all these other technologies. And honestly, there's a lot of noise out there and no one really knows what the next technology is gonna be in terms of breakthroughs or how it's going to change engineering life. And it's honestly forgivable because there's so much stuff out there, but one company that we have found here has done something a little bit different. Instead of trying to show off the latest SICK or GAN technologies and trying to compete with everybody else in that field of engineering, let's be honest, doesn't really matter when you have so many suppliers out there. Instead, they've gone a different direction. Today, we're at Pulsive, and honestly, what they have been developing is really exciting, and it all comes down to power factor correction. So thank you ever so much for having us here today. And just before we dive into the stuff that you guys have been working, explain to the audience who you are and what you do. Uh, so my name is Daryl Kingham. I'm the CEO of Pulsive. I joined about four years ago now, and uh, our um, inventor, um, Zaki Ahmed, came up with a, a brand new idea for doing optimized power factor correction. Now, Zaki actually came from a uh, sort of a communications background, and he had this, this idea that he could apply his learnings from communications in the power world, mm. which is why I think it's, he's approached it a little bit differently yeah. to, to people that were already in the industry. Um, and over the years that we've been talking about it and developing it, we've had a huge amount of skepticism. Mm. Um, the technology has been stable now for probably 24 months. But what we've had to do is to show people in, in end applications how you can take the foundation technology and really show the value and the benefits. And mm. um, we started with USB-C, that and that's what we're showcasing today. So, as I said in the introduction of the video, SICK and GAN, it seems to me that you think it's not as important as engineers might think. Well, I mean, for us, nothing wrong with, with enhancing switching technology, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there, are, there are good reasons why yep. miniaturization and bringing costs down are gonna benefit the industry. But when we, we've been focused on, I mean, you'll see our tagline as a business is do more using less. Mm. We want to get to a point where no matter what consumer device you're using or, or whatever you're powering from the mains, that you're maximizing the amount, what, the amount of energy that you're getting something useful from and you're, yeah. you're wasting as little as possible. And yes, GAN and silicon carbide contribute to that. Mm. But with our uh, power topology, mm. we want to make sure that, that, that no matter how your power supply is behaving, you're getting the absolute best performance from it. Mm. So we use GAN and we use silicon carbide in our designs, but those devices alone are not gonna get you where you need to be. What you need is a new topology like Pulsive delivers, yeah. so that you can pretty much revolutionize design rather than you know, GAN and silicon carbide frame maybe adds a, you know, a fraction of a percent. Mm. You know, we, we believe, if you look at this current standards and in fact the, the kind of standards that people are using to produce these sorts of products, you know, that the, the the kinds of efficiencies people are looking at as a minimum is 88%. Mm. We're getting a, an average of 94. Mm. So if you think about that, that's, that's halving the losses in power yeah. electronics, right? And that can apply to everything we use every day as consumers. Now, I've got to ask you very quickly. Yeah, go on. One question that you have, you've told me that engineers have come up and said, how on earth can you add a stage to a power supply and get more efficiency out than, than the, you, you should get less? So. What exactly is it that you guys are doing? How are you achieving that? Yeah, so brilliant question. I have to say, I'd say over the last month or so, we've had more and more people say, sorry, we don't believe you. It's impossible <laughs> that you can add a stage to a power supply mm. and increase the efficiency. Yeah. And, and the, in fact, we, we put something out on LinkedIn, which we probably ought to repost as part of this, is, a, is a, an explanation of how there are marginal gains across the whole design, that by adding our stage in, you can improve the overall efficiency. Yeah. Okay? What it is fundamentally is that the way our optimized power factor correction works is that we reduce the peak line currents yeah. by an order of magnitude. So I've been mean, talking about this design, that's something like 300 milliamps as opposed to amps yeah. of peak current. And if you're reducing the peak current, that, that means that the losses in your rectifier reduce, the losses in your transformer reduce, mm. and it just ripples through the whole system. Mm. And so it's absolutely genuine, and I, I will take the Pepsi challenge, right? <laughs> Because <laughs> we've, we've done it with customers, because they, they don't believe it at first. We say, look, take our technology, put the additional stage in there, and you'll see that the overall power supply design will suddenly be better. Mm. And that's what we've done with this. I mean, the, the, the silicon, I won't talk too much about the, um, the, te the other technology we've used in here, but it's bog standard technology from yeah. other semiconductor companies. We've taken their designs, which had a claimed efficiency of one thing, 
added our technology and suddenly the whole thing is improved dramatically. And so this is why for installed applications, we can do more power than anybody else because the temperatures at which this operates is much lower. And, and, and so, and, and like you say, at, while everyone else is focusing on sticking GAN to try and reduce power consumption and increase like performance, you've gone a step back and gone, well actually let's take a look at the power, uh, power factor correction, uh, correction situation. And just by solving that one problem alone, you can now reduce the size of your design anyway. Yes, and, and, and it's not an either or. Because what I keep saying to companies is now th this design is a year old now, yeah. and we know that technology is evolving. Yeah. So whatever improvements you get in the DC to DC converter or in the GAN technology, or by taking GAN and integrating it with drivers, you can just make those additional improvements the way we do it. So people think, you know, people say, well, yeah, but you know, we've got a better technology or a competing mm. technology. No, 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 it's complementary. Whatever additional gains you get elsewhere in the design mm. is an adder to what we've delivered. Yeah. So to be crystal clear about what it is that you actually provide as a solution to engineers, yep. it's not that you've got a particular silicon wafer design or anything like that. It's, it's effectively software in the end design that's controlling the circuit to make sure that it minimizes that peak current consumption. Yeah, so what we've done is, is we've taken a, a controller, yep. we've, we've embedded our IP in that controller, and that yep. controller monitors the grid, yep. and then it controls the switching of a FET to charge a capacitor, that's effectively what it does. And then that yep. capacitor is then discharged by the DC to DC stage, right? Very simple. Yeah. Um, because it's our IP, we've got different business models for different customers. Yeah. So in the simplest model, we say, well, look, here's a finished module. Yeah. We've done all the engineering. We've taken it through regulatory compliance. It's EMC compliant. You literally need to connect oh, mains in one side. I mean. Sorry. Yeah, that's useful. EMC compliant. EMC compliant. Yeah, yeah, that's very useful. So you can take this and then yeah. you can put it in these sorts of products and literally you, you give it mains and then you put a, a USB connector into it. Yeah. Okay? And we can do different form factors. We can do different uh, USB configurations, you know, 2C, yeah. 1A, 2C, 3C, et cetera. Um, and that's model number one. Model number two is we know that there's a, there's a huge um, community of power engineers that know how to do power supplies. And for them, they just take our chip that's got our IP in it, put some very simple passive components around it, outside of it, depending on the power level, and they can build the rest of the power supply the same as we can, yeah. okay? And then the third option is, you know, we know that there are sem semiconductor companies, GAN companies that yeah. want to add the capability of our IP together with putting together the GAN drivers, the GAN switches, flyback controllers, that type of thing, in which case they can take our IP and embed it as part of a license mm. to build whatever solution they think the market needs. And so, and, and so that's giving customers the complete flexibility in using your uh, uh, IP in their designs to make sure that they can get rid of that power factor correction issue that would normally dump a hell of a lot of power and it just goes, it's just wasted. I mean, ultimately we wanted to come up with a, with a, a way of deploying this as broadly as possible, yep. as quickly as possible, and to get this out in the market so that we can save consumers power, mm. we can improve future designs, and we can get actually f things like high power fast charging mm. in applications that it wasn't previously possible. Mm. And we think with those, we haven't thought of another business model, but we think with those three, we should be able to accommodate most use cases. Now, why do you think it is that engineers have that degree of it's like uh, skepticism around the around the uh, uh, the power uh, power factor correction savings, even though you've proven it and you've demonstrated it actually works. What, what do you think it is about the engineers that sort of stops them from believing that this works? I think it's because it's different. Different. Yeah, it's different. Mm. So, so first of all, I mean, we've been through we go through this cycle with every single customer. So the first yeah. thing is you introduce it. It's like oh, the five stages of green, isn't it? <laughs> it, it, it? I mean, but but it's become a and you know, Zach and I've been trying to find ways of cracking this cycle more quickly because it. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to have to go to each customer and have to do this. We want the industry to suddenly the, the light bulb to come it's on. It's actually a thing. It works. Yeah. It's, stop asking the same questions that 50 other engineers have been asking all the time. Because it doesn't matter what we put on our website. It doesn't matter how many reference designs we put out. We still get the same challenges, which is um, how is it that you can add that extra stage and it can be more efficient. So what we're, what we're doing now is we're, 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 st we're trying to educate more, hmm. which is where you guys come in, right? It's, you know, would, you, would, you, would it make sense to say that it's uh, effectively an intelligent power factor correction system? Well, we call it optimized power factor because 
it's it's power factor, but it's done differently. And the way we do it means it's better than it's been done before. And instead of being a passive solution, like with a bunch of inductors and capacitors, it's an active solution. It's, it's an active it's solution. It's constantly monitoring, it's checking, and it's making adjustments. Hence why I, I could understand that maybe the, maybe the term intelligent might make more sense to an engineer, because at least they know that what it means that this, the system is always analyzing, going, hang on, the power factor correction is drifting in the wrong direction. Let's do something to then bring it back. And so by doing that, you know, you, you've got a system that's always, I mean, I mean how, how, what is the power factor correction of, the, of this kind of module? What would you say it is in terms of like the number itself? So, so I mean, it, it varies depending on what it's yeah. doing in the cycle. But you know, you're talking about 96 to 98. Wow. Yeah, really? it's, it's very high. Yeah. Oh yeah, so there really is no room for waste, is there at all in that? No, what, what we try to do is come up with, a, a, what do you need from a power supply, right? Yeah. You want it to, you want to minimize the amount of loss yeah. in the design. You want it to be small. Yes. You want it to run cool. You want it to run off of any mains anywhere in the world. Yeah. You want it to deliver full power, regardless of what mains it's connected to. And, and the other thing you want to do is, you know, ideally when you plug it in, it doesn't spark. Yeah. Because that's something that's quite common as well. Pulsive technology delivers all those things. So there's, there are no compromises with this thing. It does everything you need from a power supply. I think that it'd be fair to say the only compromise is the engineer has to realize that his beliefs on power factor correction are wrong and false. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that this is a solution that engineers need to start looking at because what I can see this being useful for is that, like you say, you take GAN and SIG, yes, it helps to give you that higher power, but you still got an issue with heat from the power factor correction. So you combine it with that, you're reducing the amount of heat in total, which means you can then run it on higher power because you're no longer limited by the fact that this, this power, uh, you know, the, the, the initial part of the power circuit is no longer generating as much heat as it used to. And so it's giving engineers a lot more opportunity for growth in their design. Well, and, and, and part of the reason that we, we built these, because ultimately, you know, in, in an ideal world, we, we would just make our technology available and then everybody would just design, design yeah. with it themselves. Yeah. But the reason we, we built these is to say, look, don't believe our marketing claims. Just try Take it. Take one of these, yeah. plug it in, yeah. connect it to your USB, measure it, check the temperature, because everything we're saying on this stand and in our literature, you can prove for yourself. And that's why we has to, had to go to the complete module yeah. design. And, and I think it's fair to say that SIC and GAN aren't everything. When it comes to new power, it's not everything. It's not the only point of efficiency that you can, atta you can attack. You know, and, and like, like once you've done power factor correction, then it might be the connector you use, it might be, uh, I don't know, the casing you use, the airflow. Everything plays a factor in that design. Um, but very interestingly, why, why USB-C? Because you, you said something interesting about this earlier about, about uh, quick charging. So just tell me why you chose USB-C. So the reason we chose USB-C is that in the early days when we were introducing the concept to people, mm -hmm. we had customers all the way from people doing EV chargers yeah. to, um, to uh, laptop power supplies, to industrial power supplies for, for hospital beds and all sorts of things. And they all wanted something slightly different. Mm -hmm. And we had to say to them, well, look, we, we can't design a bespoke power supply for every customer and every application. Yeah. We, you know, we just, it's not scalable. What we wanted to do is say, well, how about we create something that we build once and that is ubiquitous and people yeah. just embrace and adopt in high volumes. Because at the end of the day, we're here to sell chips or we're here to sell modules. So it, it's a numbers game. USB-C is the obvious thing to do because you literally have mains in one side and then you have a connector out the other side. And then everything we do in the middle, mm. we can just make available to people and they can just copy it mm. or they can buy a module. But we design it once and it can be used in millions, tens of millions of, of units. And, and, I, it, and I also think that USB-C has the advantage that you've got like the, the whole USB power delivery standards coming in. They're going to try and push more power down. So it kind of just helps to make everything sort of uniform and unified in one singular sort of platform of connectors and power solutions. Absolutely. And, and for us, you know, 65 and 70 watt was a starting point. We're going to do a 240 watt variant of it as well. And what that will show people is that if they adopt pulsive osmium technology for USB generally, if we've done it at a 65, we've done it at 240, mm. then whether you're doing it at 100, 140, 200, whatever, clearly we've covered the, the full range mm. and, and it's applicable and it will work. And I think seeing all the solutions that you guys have you know, developed and provided, I think it's really important for engineers out there to realize that next time you're using your laptop, your phone charger, put your hand on it, and I've done this myself, it's still hot, even if it's a 65 watt USB-C charger, it's still really hot, why? Because it's sticking down on everything. It really, there are lots of other places in that design that can be attacked to reduce the power consumption, and in this case, power factor correction using intelligence control systems, I think, are the solution for the future. So, before we wrap up this video, I've got one more question for you. For the audience who are watching this video, 
What would you say to them if they wanted to get involved with Pulsar Solutions? I would say, first of all, believe the, the hype. Believe the hype, believe which the is hype. very hard to do, but believe it. Believe the hype. And secondly, go on our website, mm -hmm. because we've got oodles of data on there about how you design with it, component selection, access to evaluation boards, sample modules. Um, and for the most part, you, if, you, if you're prepared to believe that this technology works, you can go on today and design with it without our involvement. But we do appreciate that a number of companies, at least for the first one, they will engage, they want to um, they want to get the direct support. Yeah. And what we find is once we've been through that process with them, then they, they go off and do their own thing. Fantastic. It, it, it feels as though initially it's, it's a confidence thing. Because yeah. it's new and different. It's, well, can we trust this? Does it really work? And we're gradually getting over that hurdle, partially because we've now built these things, which is a complete design. Yeah. So we've done all the engineering to prove that end to end, you can produce a real product that's better than anything else in the market. And most importantly, if you don't believe it, get one yourself. Yeah. I think that. I think it sums it up quite well. Thank you. Thank you ever so much for having us here today. Thanks for your time. Thank you.